Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So I want to do a quick video today because I think it's important at this stage in the game. I want to do more high production, well-researched content, but I just haven't had the time to do it. But I do have a video coming out in the next couple days, probably in two days, uh, which is going to summarize uh, my viewpoint on the state of things and where I think it's going to be heading and what the worst case scenario might be that's going to come of all this. So I want to say though, you're going to know when this has reached a critical mass. And what I mean by that is the point of no return, the point where containment has truly failed. I don't believe that containment has truly failed yet. Now that's a very optimistic view in light of what we know about this contagion. But I think that there still is a possibility that we would have a very slow spread, possibly a resurgence in fall, but I'm still optimistic. That said, there still is a very good possibility that this can go awry. So this is when you're gonna know that the crap has really hit the fan. The first time you hear that the hospitals within your region are being overwhelmed, and I mean, they're probably already overwhelmed, right? If you, <laughs> if you live around here anyways, you know that um, our healthcare system is always max capacity. When you start hearing news reports that hospitals can't, can't keep up, that people aren't coming into work, that's when you know that you're on the brink of SHTF with this current virus, okay? That's when you know it's about to hit the fan because hospitals are going to be where this really gets out of control. You have a highly vulnerable population no matter how sanitary the workers are, they can only do so much. They're there for, you know, 12 hour shifts and people make mistakes and germs are gonna get spread. And you're gonna have people who are undiagnosed and people who present in the ER and it's going to spread, okay? And once you hear that it's spread there, that's when you know that we're basically past the point of containment. Not necessarily, though, because what they might try to do is lock it down like they did in Asia. But be warned that if they do that, the economy is finished. The economy was nearly finished just with China shutting down for two months. And we still don't really know. I still don't know how credible the information coming out of there is. It Was it ever credible? Who knows? If that happens you know that the crap has hit the fan one because the economy is going to tank if they try to lock it down after that because that's going to be the only solution once this starts spreading from the hospitals and the workers get it and if they have to use the option to lock everything down like they did in china and nobody goes to work and nobody leaves the house and you know only the essential services go to work then the economy is going to be finished and uh, that's going to be an SHTF situation unto itself. Now, we know that the World Health Organization is now saying that this has a 3 to 3.5% 3 case fatality rate. I said that a couple videos ago, but that's just based on the numbers that we've seen. So now, for whatever reason, they are not taking into account the mild unreported cases, or they are, but they're also factoring in uh, potential fatalities which were missed, which weren't counted. So people who might have died of uh, pneumonia, flu-related complications, which weren't tested. So they're thinking that the fatality rate is higher. And it's very high for people over the age of 80. And it's still very high for people over the age of 50. So, you know, the younger you are, basically, the less fatal this is. But just watch just pay attention to what's going on in your local hospital because that's when you're going to know this is out of control now i live in the equivalent of the midwest here in canada i live in the west but i'm not in the far west here we have two major uh, metropolis metropolitan areas we have vancouver and we have toronto and we also have calgary and uh, edmonton which are probably going to be next on the list in montreal uh, the big big cities that's where this is going to start first and then it's going to spread everywhere else. Fortunately, not a lot of people travel here. It's not as transient a population as you would find 
in those major cities. So we're probably going to be last to feel the effects. But some people will say, well, because of the incubation period and because you can spread it when you're asymptomatic, there's some research to show that, that it doesn't have to get that far to the point that I'm talking about for containment to have failed. But I'm trying to be optimistic here. That's when I think that not only has containment failed, but containment is impossible at that point. Because that means you need to start warehousing people in other places. And I just think that if it gets to that point, it's going to be such a haphazard situation. You're going to have people in the hallways. You're going to have people coughing all over each other in the emergency rooms. The workers are going to be stressed out. They're going to get sloppy. Mistakes are going to be made. And a lot of it might be transmitted just by a worker who forgets to change their gloves or who forgets to sandy up one time and they're going to spread it from person to person. Not because they're not good at their job. And I'm not saying that those people don't deserve a medal in times like these for actually showing up for work because a lot of people are not going to show up to work. And uh, I'm going to talk about the worst case scenario with all this. Now, I'm trying to be optimistic. I still am quite optimistic about these containment efforts. Okay. But it's still quite mysterious how this thing spreads. It seems like in certain environments, it spreads like wildfire. So I'm thinking that in hospitals, in jails, in various institutions where you have people like on the cruise ship for extended periods of time, that's where you're going to see this thing spread like crazy. And uh, if it gets out of control in those situations and all those people take it home to their families and, you know, they take it home to their kids and their kids who are probably going to have mild cases but are asymptomatic are going to spread it to the other kids and those kids are going to spread it to the parents. And the thing that I think a lot of people and myself included got wrong about the whole SHTF pandemic scenario is the speed at which it would progress. I think in the movies, even in the movie Contagion, it was a fairly rapid spread. I think by day 120, like, you know, half the planet had it, and I can't remember how many people died, but there was a significant amount of people who died. Probably something like 50 million. But the spread of something like this, even if highly infectious, even with an R naught of between three and four, takes a long time to spread. It takes a while. But it reaches that critical mass point where it's like the experiment where you, if you have a bacteria in a test tube, if the bacteria doubles every minute, by 60 minutes, the test tube will be full of bacteria. But at the 59th minute or 58th minute, you can barely see the bacteria. But then it goes exponential. It multiplies by itself. And then it multiplies by itself again. So what that means is, you know, when the hospitals start to burst at the seams, that's when you know you can see the bacteria in the vial. And you're at the breaking point. You're at the point where it's about to truly go viral. Stay safe, guys, and uh, stay vigilant because we may be crossing that Rubicon at some point in the near future. I hope we don't. But uh, we always got to consider that that is very much a possibility. And there's a lot of unknowns here. It, it's very easy to be optimistic or pessimistic depending which news agency you watch. I'll watch one expert on the issue and I'll walk away thinking, oh, maybe this isn't that bad. Then I'll watch another and I'll be like, oh, you know, this has the potential to be really bad. So you, you have to find a happy medium with the, the information that you're absorbing on it because there's a lot of conflicting viewpoints in spite of the fact that there seems to be this underground consensus that that it's a pandemic. It's, it's still not guaranteed yet. And I understand where that World Health Organization is coming from. They're trying to be as optimi optimistic as possible so not to crash the global economy because all it's going to take is one more big economy to be brought down for this to to collapse and we've seen uh, the proverbial dead cat bounce with the stock market today where you know yesterday was a record high last week it was record lows yesterday it was a record high now it's back to record lows again so you know in my personal opinion uh, i'm not putting any money in this market right now and that's just me i'm not a financial advisor 
but I wish I would have got out a while ago, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, there's definitely some investment opportunities, as there always is. I know I'm going a little off topic here, as there always is in a bear market. Uh, particularly, Big Pharma is going to have a heyday with this. I have moral apprehension about making those types of investments in those types of companies. Uh, just because, I don't know, something about it just doesn't seem right to be profiteering like that. But as the saying goes, when there's blood in the streets, bye, bye, bye. Anyways, what do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments section. And uh, stay tuned because we've got a big video coming up for you this week. And we're going to break down what the worst case scenario is for the situation we find ourselves in. I try not to say the words because my last dozen videos haven't been monetized but it's all good you know i'm just trying to help as many people make sense of this as possible so stick around for that thanks for watching guys stay safe canadian prepper out